Welcome to Op-Ed Live by Washington Square News. I'm Richard Chu, and I'm joined here today by Sean Paik and Annie Cohn. And we're here today to discuss Humans of New York, which is a human humanist photograph blog on Instagram and Facebook. And recently, they did a series of photographs on Mott Hall Bridges Academy, which is a high school in a disadvantaged, low-income area of Brooklyn. And with this series of photographs came $1.2 million worth of fundraising, which goes directly to the school for capital improvements, trips to Harvard, and a scholarship fund. So I guess my question for you today is, what do you think about this sort of new philanthropic direction that Humans of New York has been taking? I think it's a really excellent new approach, and I mean, the proof is in the success of it. I believe uh, they originally were only intending to raise around $100,000, and they surpassed that you know, so quickly. Um, so I think it's great that Humans of New York is using its popularity and following to give back to the New York community and disadvantaged uh, children and people. Right, I think there's no question that what um, Honey's doing is, is, is great. And I think that it's great that he's using his popularity to his advantage and to the advantage of New York City, um, the New York City community. At the same time, I think it's a little bit worrisome um, to see that the, the reception of this just in terms of old media versus new media. Uh, the New York Times came out with a very similar article two months ago on a student at the same school, Kareem Butler, yet I don't think very many people have heard that name before. And, um, and I think that that to me is a little bit worrisome and I think that kind of is representative. It shows that, you know, it, that this Facebook page has done more, received more hype than the New York Times. Incidentally, do either of you follow Humans of New York? Um, I do, and I have for years, ever since I was still in high school in St. Louis, Missouri, you know, dreaming of living in New York someday. Um, and I thought it was just a very interesting way to sort of glimpse into the lives of New Yorkers. and. I just I thought it was a fun, interesting little page. Yeah, I actually uh, I actually don't follow him. I used to. I uh, stopped probably about halfway through 2012. Um, I to be honest, I got a little bit bored of what he was doing. Uh, you know, I, I can't really say too much about what he's been doing recently. But at the time, he was taking very similar photographs, very similar, um, asking very similar questions, getting very similar quotes. And you know, uh, I, I worked as a as an intern at a Chattanooga paper taking pictures uh, for two summers and what he does is very similar to what I did and it's very similar to what many photojournalists do on a daily basis and um, I don't know I, I, um, I think that his is a very you know kind of shortened form of what what other photojournalists do right. um, but he's definitely made it you know more accessible you know, he has way more followers and course. more people know of him than, I guess, any individual Yeah, of course. Journalist. Right, and I think it uh, speaks to the way people are increasingly consuming their news and media in this sort of abbreviated format, especially young people, um, more so than, you know, something like the New York Times, which does have such an established reputation. You know, the fact that that receives so little recognition speaks to... Right. I guess what I was saying was, I, you know, I, I really do respect what he's been doing, and I think that how he's been doing it has been revolutionary for photojournalists. At the same time, I'm a little bit bitter, uh, just as a photojournalist myself, uh, just seeing seeing the reception that he's gotten because, you know, the the industry itself, Humans of New York is not a very um, representative, um, you know, uh, uh, is is not a very good representation of the photography industry. The reality is, you know, um, the uh, Sports Illustrated just laid off their entire photo staff, including some photographers who had shot every single Super Bowl game. And two years ago, the Chicago Sun-Times fired their entire photo staff and replaced them with iPhones. I think that the industry itself is, is, is not doing so well. All right, well, Annie, Sean, thank you. Thank you both for being with us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page at Washington Square News, as well as following us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And of course, check out our print and online editions every weekday.